We held the start of this race for about 15 minutes so we could bring it to you live in its entirety following the event at Heartland Park, Topeka, Kansas. Here is the starting lineup as they roll out for the Ford Credit 300. First career pole for Curtis Markham, the rookie. Five-time winner this year, Chad Little on the front row. Johnny Benson, Jr., the point leader, and Danny Edwards, second start of the year. He goes off in fourth place. Fifth, the youngster Buckshot Jones in his second start, and sixth is Jimmy Spencer. Seventh, Kevin LePage, and eighth, the champion David Green. Ninth is Doug Hebron, second at Nazareth, and Hermie Sadler, last year's runner-up here. Eleventh, Jason Keller, fourth in the points. Mike McLaughlin, the winner at Dover. Jeff Fuller, second in the rookie standings, and Johnny Chapman, the former Dash Series champ. Elliot Sadler, Hermie's little brother, makes his Bush Series debut, and Tim Fito, a seventh in points. Larry Pearson has won three Bush races here, Bill Parsons. Johnny Rumley, his second start at South Boston, and Rodney Combs with a new sponsor, ninth in the points. Tommy Houston, a three-time winner here, and Bobby Dodder, fourth here in 1991. Elton Sawyer has eight top ten finishes here, and Randy Porter makes his second start on this track. Jeff Green, third in the standings, and Ward Burton returns to his hometown stomping grounds. Chris Diamond, first start since Nashville, and Tracy Leslie, who had a third in Charlotte. Dennis Setzer, defending champion of this race, he's in a new ride this week. And Mike Dillon makes his third Bush start. The Provisionals, Jim Bound, who was 10th here last year, and Patty Moise, a career-high seventh last week at Talladega. The did not qualify is Road Racer Ashton Lewis Jr., Jimmy Mann, Kerry Mix from Canada, and Skip Panel. He'll be riding along today with Elton Sawyer in the Brad Aikens and Bob Sutton Ford Credit Red Carpet Lease Thunderbird. There's a look out the windshield from Elton Sawyer's car. And also we'll be riding with Bobby Dodder, who is in the Dennis Shoemaker Duralube Chevy this week only interesting story there we'll get to it in a bit driving the high tools car the daughter has been wheeling all season is uh, the jimmy hensley of the bush division dennis setzer dennis could have more driver suits at the end of this year well, welcome to south boston i'm mike joy alongside buddy baker and jeff burton this is also his home racetrack here quick look at the AutoZone race analysis brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across america 300 laps 120 miles the distance race record set by Dennis Setzer one year ago. It's the 30th Bush Series race at South Boston, Virginia, and A.J. Wagner, the Ford Credit Marketing Manager, is set to wave the green flag. Field holds it down, and we are under green as Curtis Markham and Chad Little lead them off to turn one and get a good jump on the field. Benson and Edwards, 28-year-old driver, making his second Bush start. He was 15th at Myrtle Beach in fourth. Jimmy Spencer down to the track apron underneath Buckshot Jones. Nothing there. And we still can't decide who's leading this race now. Markham breaks out. See Chad Little get a little loose coming off turn two there. These straightaways are so short. You don't want to cross up and use your tires up too early. Front four have a breakaway. Spencer works hard on Buckshot Jones. There are your two leaders. There's that pack just behind the front four. Spencer has gotten past Jones. He's on a mission. Jimmy Spencer in the Penaloo car. And one car in the wall at turn three is Phil Parsons. Well, Phil just got in the wall a little bit. He's back underway now, but the uh, whether the talk is coming out or not. He's back no. underway. No caution. Things happen fast and furious here at South Boston. Parsons is going to get lapped as he thumped the wall with the left rear corner of the Luxair air conditioning Chevrolet. I tell you what, guys, it's a tough way to start this race. Uh, that early in the race, get a spin, and you can see uh, about the tail clip down a little bit on that car, and he's got a pitch. Randy Pemberton? Well, Phil, Phil Parsons, he has a flat on the left side, and he does indeed. They're going to go ahead and work on the left side of that car. Unfortunate for Parsons, looking forward to a good run here today, but uh, he goes a lap down. He'll lose at least one on pit road and already lost one on the track to the race leader. Curtis Markham. First time he's led in Bush Grand National Racing. Watch for Phil Parsons. There he goes on the right side of the screen and away. Mike, he didn't have any help at all there. He just got in there hot. Once you get out of the groove a little bit, there's a lot of debris on the outside of the racetrack there, and around the car went. They have restarted Phil Parsons. He is at least three laps down. 
Curtis Markham showing you why he was on the pole. He has about a six, eight car length lead over second place Chad Little at the moment. Johnny Benson's running along in third place. These guys are running for points and everything else. Curtis Markham is bracket right. I tell you what, Curtis has run a lot of racetracks like this. He is really good on a slick racetrack, a small racetrack, and there's no doubt that the Hensleys know what they're doing at these places. Johnny Benson getting passed there. Around the outside, he and Chad Little rather going at it. Second place is the battle just behind your leader, Curtis Markham. Back to single file. Benson keeps trying the bottom. Johnny Benson down on the flat part of the racetrack trying to make a move on Chad Little. It's going to be really tough to get under him. You see him fall back in there, cool his tire. Now he turns to the bottom. You can see the car turn sideways up on turn two. When they, when they redid this racetrack, what they did is the bottom doesn't have as much banking as the top. The, more, the higher up you run, the more banking you have. So when you try to get up underneath somebody, you just don't have that banking to hold you. And you can see Spencer going back some there because there's just not the grip on the bottom. Here comes Jimmy again, right down to the bottom on Danny Edwards, slides the car in the middle of the corner and loses his momentum. Well, if he does that eight or 10 laps in a row, you see him making that move again. He's hoping Danny Edwards will maybe make him a little mistake. But as long as he's on that flat part of the racetrack, he's using up his tire at a big time right there. Like Denver, Colorado, Agawam, Massachusetts, and Tucson, Arizona, all very competitive short tracks. They have this progressive banking here at South Boston, Virginia, and it means the upper lane is it certainly at the start of the race, the fast lane. Well, Mike, you can see Johnny Benson now trying that lower line. Now watch him off the corner. He loses all his momentum there as Chad Little pulls a full car lamp coming out of the corner on him. I was fortunate enough to stand in turn three, turn two this afternoon. And I could see that the 74 car all morning long worked on getting set up at the bottom. Uh, maybe his game plan is to try to run the bottom. I would say it's going to be really hard to do that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Hammer time. You, you can see Jimmy Spencer had no luck on the bottom. Now he's trying way outside on the uh, 61 car there. Well, he's going to make it exciting for us, I promise you. Danny Edwards has tried for three Bush races, qualified for two, missed the field at Hickory, ran at Myrtle Beach, and here at South Boston. They're going to run five this season. Here's David Green underneath Buckshot Jones, who started in fifth. And the Slim Jim car, the defending series champ, is going to move up a spot. And Hermie Sadler in the DeWalt Chevy number one, who knows this track really well, is going to come right along with him. Now, what David Green did there, he cut off the angle so Buckshot couldn't accelerate off the corner and took that line away from him. Here in replay, we see just a little tap by Jimmy Spencer because Danny Edwards was going to come up and run the groove. Uh, yeah, the 18 car seems to have a problem. Randy Porter, turn one. A lot of smoke from that car. He's trying to get into the backstretch pits, and he will as the leaders go past. You saw that car. Look at the right front torn up. He's been up in the wall with that car. That's a pretty hard look. You see the right front down on that car. He's trying to get across traffic as we speak here. Can't, get, can't yeah. get to pit road. He's stuck right there. This place is small, and you just cannot get in pit road if that line keeps coming. Curtis Markham, meanwhile, has opened up a two-second lead on the field here. As finally Porter, now, oh, he gets hit and around. A save by Dennis Setzer. <laughs> Setzer tried to go under Porter, who was trying to get to pit road. Remember, Setzer's in the 08 car today. And everything shuffles out. So we've already had, well, three wrecks and no caution, folks. That's the way it goes here in South Boston, Virginia. You're watching Bush Grand National Racing Live on DNN. We'll be right back. This is Dale Jarrett's NASCAR. You can't get his engine, you can't get his tires, but you can get his motor oil. Texaco Haviland Formula 3. It's formulated to control volatility and fight oil vaporization. It provides complete protection, and it's the exact same Haviland you can buy right off the shelf, which, by the way, is a heck of a lot easier. So when I turn the key, it sounds like my starter is going bad. And so I figured since I heard about AutoZone, it was a good place to try as any, right? But get this. I go in there to buy a starter. The guy tells me we need to test my old one first just to make sure that's not the problem. It turns out that it's a solenoid switch. That one little test saved me a big headache. You know, that AutoZone's all right. And when you get service like that, I mean, you don't forget it. From Darlington to Talladega, through Daytona, Rockingham, and Watkins Glen, 
In every major NASCAR race, Bush Beer recognizes the pole winner with the Bush Pole Award. Because if there's one thing we know for sure, everyone follows the leader. Bush Beer, proud sponsor and official beer of NASCAR. No trendy health club. No $60 shorts. No bull. Speed Stick's no-nonsense formula gives you 110% protection. Like you, it never quits. Five minutes. Now at Pep Boys, get any four of our 35,000-mile all-season steel-belted tires at an incredible low $109. That's right, any 75 or 80 series, any four, just $109 at Pep Boys now. Today's exclusive coverage of the Ford Credit 300 on TNN is brought to you by... Avalon Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. Take it to the star. By the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. By smooth Bush beer. And easy drinking Bush Light. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. And by Speed Stick by Minute. Like you, it never quits. Green flag racing so far as Curtis Markham continues to lead. The battle has been right behind him as they try to overlap cars. There is Markham, and you see how big that lead is on Chad Little, Johnny Benson, Danny Edwards Jr., and this man, Jimmy Spencer. Oh, rough and tumble and a spin in turn two. Mike Dillon goes around. There's his number 12, the Salem National Lease car at the bottom of the apron in two. No caution. He'll go a lap down. Got together side by side and brushed with uh, Dennis Setzer. There you see the damage to Dillon's car. He's had a lot of success here in the late model stocks. He's going to have to come in. That right rear looks like it might be dragging in the corner. You see there as he starts in the corner, smoking pretty hard. They'll have to come in and take that off that tire. Tough break for Dillon. Now, just in front of Markham, you see the 08 car. Now, that is Dennis Setzer. Now, here's how that happened. Bobby Dodder and his partners, Ronnie and Lee Smith and MPH Racing, the easiest way to describe this, folks, they're divorcing. They're not talking. <laughs> so they can't work out of the same truck, and he can't drive that car as long as they own part of it. The deal for Bobby to buy out the team and finalize the divorce will probably be finalized Monday. And Bobby's new team, Midwest Motorsports, he'll drive that 08 with high tools the rest of the year. Today... Dennis Setzer is in it and almost takes a swipe at Curtis Markham there. Curtis is cutting under him there, and he just got back on the throttle and turned sideways. He got in the daughter. I mean, I knew I'd do that yep. before the day was over. On, on, uh, Setzer. Setzer, on Setzer's car there, he's got a, a V6 in that car, and it's not quite as powerful as Curtis Markham's car is. Bobby Dodder is here. He's in the race. He's driving the Dennis Shoemaker car, the Duraloop machine that has one of our in-car cameras, number 64. Brandy? What? Uh, I just want you guys to know that the rear sway bar is now here in the Bush Series. Uh, they tried it. A lot of teams tried it when they went up to Milwaukee in practice. They took it away. They did not run it. Uh, maybe a couple of teams did run it. Curtis Markham's team does have it in. I talked to Jeff Hensley before the race. He swears by it. Says this car needed the rear sway bar, particularly on these short tracks. It doesn't allow the rear to roll over as much. I'm sure Jeff Burton might comment a little bit on the rear sway bar, but I believe, Jeff, uh, over half of the team's running the uh, rear sway bar in this race, and so far, it seems like it's working for Curtis. Thanks, Randy. We have the first caution of the day, and it comes from Doug Hevron's spin, the Cincinnati Millicron, number 35, spinning right in the middle of the back straightaway. First caution of the day. Let's show you, show you what happened here. What happened to Hebron? Oops. Well, it's, I tell you, it's really hard to tell right there. I know what's happening right now. He's wanting to slow down real quick. <laughs> Mike, he might have had a little bit of help up off that corner there. I would say right now that's a little bit of temper inside that car there. So the former super modified ace from Oswego, New York, is back underway, but he will go a lap down, apparently, after that spin. 24 cars, 25 cars on the lead lap here in South Boston, Virginia. We'll be right back. G's hurts. When the car fires up, it's power. It's talking to me. All I hear is music. When you hit the throttle, it pulls your head back and it wants to rip it off. 
Fawcett didn't come up with the idea for a spout long and high enough to reach over and into large objects. We merely adapted it for the kitchen. High-rise faucet designs by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. At Stanley, we test the quality of our sliding mirror doors by opening and closing them over 100,000 times. This doesn't make for great entertainment, but it does make a great closet door. The Accent Mirror Door from Stanley. Let a new car payment be a financial burden. Call 1-800-32-SMART about smart makes by GMAC. It's an affordable way to drive off with a new GM vehicle. And it might even give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. The 95 racing season is hotter than ever, and Napa's leading the way with the road to the championship sale. For a limited time, pick up great-looking Napa racing caps for just $3.99. Valvoline all-climate motor oil, only 89 cents. And a 500-watt halogen work lamp is yours for a low $14.99. Napa's Road to the Championship Sale, where everyone's a winner. We keep a man Today's exclusive coverage of the Ford Credit 300 on TNN is brought to you by Napa. We keep America running. Highway transportation provided by Cedar Ridge RV Center, Branchville, New Jersey, featuring Winnebago. Call 1-800-988-4884 and let Joe and the folks tell you why Cedar Ridge is the choice of champions. When we get to Pocono tomorrow to race, buddy. I'll be glad that Cedar Ridge RV is sitting there waiting for us with air conditioning, I'll tell you. All right, let's go back to green here. Lap 44. Lap cars to the outside, and Doug Hebron gets back on the lead lap. Curtis Markham and Chad Little in the Harris Teeter number 23 battle for the lead, and Little has the bottom. But can he get the lead? He had a good spot there. He's coming off the corner. I believe he might have a preferred line getting in the corner. You see him using all the racetrack up here. He makes Markham go to the wide side. Chad was able to push the 63 car up enough where he didn't have to get down there on the flat. That was a, that was a nice move by Chad. So Little has the lead. You see David Green battling Jimmy Spencer. And number 12 is Mike Dillon a lap down. A little squeeze play there. 46. That's a DeWalt car. Not only the teammate to Hermie Sadler, but his brother, Elliot, making his Bush debut. Battling the lap cars of Jim Bound and Patty Moise, the two provisional starters. I think Elliott's won six times in a row here in his uh, late model car, so he knows this racetrack. He's just trying to get a good position here, attack position. I tell you what, he and uh, Danny Evans are both doing a really good job here today. Boy, oh boy, we got a we got a booth full here. Mark Martin just walked into the booth. Uh, welcome here, man. Thanks, buddy. It's good to be here. I wish I was out there racing, but uh, this is pretty nice in the air condition here. I'm going to tell you what, I'm looking around and more race car drivers. Race car drivers go to the race if there's one close enough to get to it. Well, you know how it is. It's, uh, it's, all, I've, it's all I've ever done. We <laughs> raced the IROC race up in Michigan today and stopped back through on our way back to Daytona here. You finished second overall. That's really neat. Yeah, it was a good run. It was a disappointment. We missed a chance to win the series. Uh, all I had to do is pick up a couple more spots, but I just had a car that wasn't handling good, and I, I couldn't do better. Dale was in a wreck on the first lap, and... All I had to do is just pick up a couple more spots. We were running sixth in the in the running, and that's the best I could muster. And I, I, you know, he beat me by three points. So, uh, you know, just one of those days. Well, we're real glad to have you up here. We're gonna get back to the racing action now. Mark Barton will pick up $100,000 per second in the IROC series, so that's a little consolation money. Pretty good deal. We don't feel so sorry for him anymore. Not do quite. <laughs> Curtis Markham now in second place, battling with Johnny Benson. That's the battle. A little further back, Danny Edwards. Then it'll be Jimmy Spencer, David Green, Hermie Sadler, Buckshot Jones, Kevin LePage. Then Mike McLaughlin, Elliot Sadler, Jason Keller, Larry Pearson, Jeff Fuller, Tim Fedoa. 
and Dennis Setzer. That's the way they're running here at South Boston. You know, just before we went away, Curtis Markham had pulled 8, 10, uh, 12 car left lead. Now he's running second. He seems to be losing the handle a little bit. You see Chad Little fighting Doug Hebron right there trying to get by him. But as they go in, Johnny Benson passes him on the outside. They couldn't do that a while ago. Well, I'm going to tell you, that rear sway bar is a really deep deal. But it's really hard to put it on your race car and just race it without having a lot of testing time with it. And uh, they've done a great job qualifying with it and running with it, but it's really hard just to come out with that thing because it really changes your race car. Makes a huge difference. Randy? For the record, uh, Chad Little is not using the rear sway bar. He also is complaining right now the car is a little tight, but also for the record, boy, the temperature has dropped significantly since the start of this race, just a mere uh, 15 minutes or so ago, a heavy cloud cover coming over. Don't know if that can change the chassis set up a little bit, but it might be working on some of these cars. There is a huge thunderhead just coming out over turn number one that is uh, getting by Doug Hevron, Chad Little has to use a little bit of muscle, and Johnny Benson is there. Well, you see Hevron there. He's fighting every inch of ground he can get right now. You see Chad Little trying to take that spot away. He needs oh! to get turned here. And everybody gets by, but damage to the back of Chad Little's car, and we're under caution. Well, I tell you, that's just good hard racing right there. The 35 car is trying really hard to stay in the lead lap, uh, and they just got together a little bit. They, Let's show you what happened here. Well, you can see there the 23 cars clearly under him. It's not, really not banging, but this is when the trouble starts. You just can't do that on these short tracks. And look at Benson all the way to the bottom taking the lead. I tell you, the 23 car could have some damage on that right rear. He, it didn't look that hard, but yeah, the, the, it, is a, it is a tire down on the right rear, and he's got his rear bumper tore off. Randy's right there. It is difficult to know if the rear end is askew. Everybody up and down pit road looking underneath, certainly a flat right rear to say the least. It, it does look a little askew from my perspective, but it's hard to say they're having trouble getting the jack under the car. They certainly want to get these tires out so he doesn't go a lap down on pit road. I mean, they're having big time trouble. They've got eight guys trying to pick this car up. They finally get it up. Tires going on. Uh, Chad, certainly not happy sitting in this car. They get it up with the Armstrong method, and the pace car here runs 25 miles an hour, and Chad Little will get out and rejoin the field. Great work by his crew to get him back out, Mike. Yes, they did. We'll take this pause as we're under caution for the second time today. Storm clouds rolling in. We put these glass walls on the course at Road Atlanta to demonstrate the wet traction and performance of the Goodyear Eagle Aqua Tread. Racing inspired dual aqua channels sweep water away for outstanding wet traction. Broad shoulders add aggressive grip for precise cornering. Its unique tread compound helps you stick to the road. You get the performance of an Eagle, the wet traction of an Aqua Tread. Eagle Aqua Tread, only from Goodyear. Too hot in your car? Don't sweat it. Now at Pep Boys, get a cool deal on our air conditioning quick check for just $19.99. Our AC quick check only $19.99. Come to Pep Boys now. Now at Pep Boys, get any four of our 35,000 mile all season steel belted tires at an incredible low $109. That's right, any 75 or 80 series, any four, just $109 at Pep Boys now. Today's exclusive coverage of the Ford Credit 300 on TNN is brought to you by Pep Boy Automotive Super Center. For information on Featherlight Trailers, the official trailer of NASCAR, call 1-800-800-1230. Spencer getting it set for the restart. Let's have another look here at what happened. Very reminiscent of the incident at Hickory where Chad was leading, tangled with a lap car, and Johnny Benson took the lead. Well, Mike, as they start in the turn three, you see Benson coming down, and Chad Little runs out there. He just makes contact on Hevron, and Hevron keeps turning left and gets into the right rear of Chad Little's car, ripping that rear panel loose, also doing a lot of damage to the rear quarter panel. I hate to keep saying this, but that the whole incident was because uh, Chad did not want to get on the bottom. He wanted to stay in the middle of the racetrack rather than getting all the way on the bottom. And it's really hard to know where that driver's going to go if he's not going to the bottom. So Heveron went in there just like he was going to do in the 74, I'm sorry, 
that and blaming somebody else now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like it when I reckon they blame driver, somebody else. Typical driver. <laughs> uh, the 23 didn't go down as low as, uh, as low as he thought he would. Right. That's Jeff Burton who's joined us here, native of South Boston, Virginia. Along Mike, with Buddy you, Baker. Ha you have some good information on the super truck race that uh, everybody was watching just a second ago. Yeah, a couple things. First off, Kerry Teague. Uh, who caused the red flag condition and had to be cut out of his car and transported to a hospital in Topeka uh, is awake and stable. That is uh, the update we have from Topeka. That is good news. Also, last week in the Bush race, we want to update you on Robbie Reiser. When we left the air, we told you that everyone involved in that last incident was okay. And at that time, Reiser was conscious, talking to the crew and everything. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, was fine. He later lost consciousness, was taken to a local hospital, sustained a concussion and a knee injury. They performed surgery on Robbie's knee Wednesday. He was released and sent home on crutches Thursday. He was in the race shop Friday. He's home watching today. So, Robbie, I wish you a quick recovery and hope to see you back on the circuit soon. So that is the update, and we'll go racing when we come back here to South Boston, Virginia. It's been a wild one so far, folks, so stay with us here on TNN. Splitfire earned a United States patent. Splitfire doesn't look like any other spark plug. And the patented Splitfire doesn't work like any other spark plug. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. Quicker in the quarter mile, a 4.8% gain in mileage. There's nothing like a split fire. You'll get more power and more mileage, or your money back. Get the guaranteed split fire advantage at leading automotive stores from coast to coast. At AutoZone, most of our customers are folks who like to work on their cars themselves. But the ones who come in most often are those who work on cars for a living. Guys like Ed Graven. Now, Ed's garage is in Ogden, Utah, where most of the time you'll find him pulling an engine or sliding under a car. And just about every day, he drives past a half dozen other parts stores on his way to AutoZone. Because Ed knows that when it comes to getting the right part for the right price, there's just no place better than AutoZone. To run 300 mile an hour in a quarter mile feels kind of like sitting at a stoplight and get rear-ended at 100 mile an hour by an 18-wheeler. The NHRA on TNN Motorsports. It doesn't get any closer. Sleep deprivation. 70 million Americans have experienced it, but you don't have to. Try maximum strength sleep in all soft gels with the sleep aid preferred by 7 out of 10 doctors. Sleep in all soft gels help you fall asleep fast. Butch Miller. Joe Rutland. Mike Skinner. Ron Hornaday Jr. Bill Sedgwick. Keep on trucking, boys. The NASCAR Super Truck Series Stevens Field 150, August 19th, 6 p.m., 5 Central on TNN Motorsports. There's no place you'd rather be. Bud Light presents Bull Nanza Nashville, part of the Professional Bull Riders Tour, only on Championship Rodeo, Sunday on TNN. We're back under green here at South Boston, Virginia. Johnny Benson and Curtis Markham have taken off from the pack just a little bit here. Mike Dillon, a lap car, separates them from the third place car, which is now David Green. Watch what happens. See the 61, see the damage on J Danny Edwards' side. Guess where that came from? We'll show you. This is about three laps after the restart. You see Jimmy Spencer in the 20 down low there. They make a little contact there. Now they're going to make a lot of contact. That shoots Edwards up towards the outside wall. He had to lock it up. Too bad. He had a great run going. He really was running well. Let me tell you, it's hard to go bush racing and run up front, and he was running up front. And uh, that, that right there is a tough break for him. Yeah, they're going to black flag him now, and oh. he's going to come in and fix it. From that angle, it showed that Spencer had to climb the hill to get to him. Look at the left front of his car for, for flapping bodywork. That's why they want to bring Edwards in. He had qualified in fourth. This is only his second bush start and was running in the top five. Mike, just a few minutes ago, we were talking about Johnny Benson being very patient. Now he's out in front. Track position means so much on a racetrack like this. 
Curtis Markham looked like he was out of the ballpark a while ago. Now he's running for the lead again. I tell you, Hubert and Jeff Hensley, they're not very, uh, they won't show you all their cards all the time. They might be telling him to slow down. You don't ever know what's going on in that 63 pitch. This is for the lead at 77 laps. Now Chad Little is way back in the pack after the pit stop to replace right side tires. The tire rule today, they're allowed four tires they can change. But when Little came in, the right rear was down on the rim. It was flat, so likely they only got charged with one tire. So they have some to go. Now, for the lead, Curtis Markham right back after it. Boy, Curtis is showing a lot of experience here on this racetrack. You can see him driving back down on the bottom part, trying to get under Benson. But Benson's got the preferred line right at the moment. He's going to have to make a mistake for Curtis to get by him. That's what short track race is all about right there, isn't it? Hermie Sather's moved up to fifth. Buckshot Jones to sixth. Great battle for seventh. Here is uh, Spencer. You see the right side of his car damage. Here's that second. There's Sadler. He's in fifth in the number one car. And there's Wardford in 95. Elton Sawyer 38 as they battle with Rodney Combs, new sponsor for Rodney. Snapper Lawn Equipment will be on that 43 car for the whole rest of the season. There's Jason Keller, Jeff Fuller battling, and Chad Little moving in. Chad Little was at the back of all these cars. You can see he's coming through the field like a butter through hot knife. Or, yeah, yeah easy butter enough through. for me to say. What do you have for lunch? <laughs> let's let's check with Randy. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I just wanted an update on Jimmy Spencer. They're, uh, NASCAR is, uh, they are black flagging Spencer as we speak. They wanted to remove the sheet metal dragging on the right side. So, boy, can't wait for him to get back out after this. Yes, not. There's the lead battle again. They are nose to tail. Great battle for seventh spot. Mike McLaughlin has swapped mustard there with Tracy uh, Leslie in the Detroit gasket car. <laughs> they have been together and not done any damage. McLaughlin on the flat. Did he make the pass? Eek. Nope. Not, not again. Going. <laughs> not going. Now, Leslie lost a lap in the pits, we're told. So this is not for position. It is uh, eighth place is McLaughlin, just behind Elliot Sadler there, who when these two were racing side by side went past. But good hard battle there. On the point. Johnny Benson and Curtis Markham run one, two, and David Green has closed right up on them. Right here, you're watching the sixth and fifth place battle. There's fifth place, number one, Hermie Sadler in fifth. Sixth is Buckshot Jones, seventh is Elliot Sadler, and eighth is Mike McLaughlin. A look at the leaders as we complete 87 laps of 300 here at South Boston, Virginia. We'll be right back. It's Racing Roundup. Welcome Bill Parsons, driver of the number 99 Luxair Chevrolet. Bill, ready for the big race. Don't think I'm going. What? You know how hot it gets in that car. Sure, Phil, but you're, uh... Comfortable right here at home with high-performance Luxair Central Air. But what about your fans? Fans? You don't need fans in a house with Luxair Central Air. Thank you, Phil Parsons. Folks, look in the yellow pages for your Luxair dealer or call 1-800-LUXAIR. One of these hammers is jacketed in high-impact polycarbonate. The other one is broken. The fiberglass jacketed hammer from Stanley. Work boots. There's one place they don't work. Inside, they just don't have much cushioning. Dr. Scholl's Maximum Comfort Work Insoles give you 100% more cushioning. They make work easier on your feet. At AutoZone, most of our customers are the kind of people who like to work on their cars themselves. That way they save money and they know the work's done right. Of course, when they come to AutoZone, they know they're going to find the right part for the right price. But sometimes, what they're looking for is just a little advice. And that's okay, because we don't put a price tag on it. You see, at AutoZone, we take pride in taking care of our customers. And we've learned that when you treat folks right, they keep coming back. I guess every kid dreams about being a racer sometime or another. I never imagined anything like this. You see the fans and how fired up they get? I guess race is like life to me. You can never really control it. But if you give it everything you got and get a little bit of luck,
Today's exclusive coverage of the Ford Greta 300 on TNN is brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Chad Little is climbing through the field. Once again, he gets underneath Mike McLaughlin in the Team 34 entry. The amazing part, that's the seventh spot as they come down the back straightaway there, down into the corner. And just ahead, Buckshot Jones and Elliot Sadler. Look at this pack coming down the back straightaway. Chad's in a pretty good spot right now. I know he had a problem earlier, but if they're not going to charge him for two tires and uh, he can get four more, I tell you what, I'd like to be in that position right now. Boy. If I was in front of those two cars. <laughs> That's starting to get exciting, isn't it? So the Sadler brothers right now are running fourth and fifth. And Elliott in his first push start. Chad Little is going to try to change that right here. Mike has fresh tires on any race car. Boy, when you get them, you look like Superman. Right now, he's on fresher tires. You see him running the bottom of the racetrack, actually passing fast cars. New that right is a driver's best friend right there. <laughs> New tires are, are what a driver loves. New right side tires for Chad Little. And now Elliott going after Hermie. Chad after Elliott. <laughs> Three wide oh, as they come boy. up out of turn two there. The, the Sadler brothers is not a TNN program, folks. That's those other guys. <laughs> the but Sadler's mother right now is saying, oh, don't wreck, don't wreck, because that would, that would cause problems at Christmas dinner. That would be expensive. Yes, it would. You can see how much forward bite he has on Chad Little's car there up out of the corner. He pulls him two, three car left. Here comes Spencer. He's trying to get, oh, he's, I don't know what he's trying to get, but he, he is trying to get one of his two laps back. When he was black flag for that sheet metal, he went two laps down. So now Jimmy is one lap down plus distance. Mike, he really don't run very well. He gets two or three laps down. Then he really turns it on. At Myrtle Beach two years ago, he got lost three laps, went back out, made them all up under the green, and ended up winning the race. So don't count Spencer out no matter how many laps. Down. All right, which Sadler brother do you pull for, Mom? Elliot's Ooh. in the lead. Here and comes McLaughlin on the bottom there. So, Hermie drops back behind younger brother as Mike McLaughlin goes to work on the bottom. French's mustard car. Hermie has a whole, I'm sorry, Elliot has a whole lot of experience here at South Boston. Yes. He's won a lot of races. He's lead the late model stock track championship points right now. He's had a really good year here, and he's just improving on it. Now, these two drivers tried to knock each other out of the park about five laps ago. Jeff Green in number three, the good wrench car, and Elton Sawyer in the Ford Credit for number 38. They are running kind of like in contact here. Well, that's kind of like walking behind somebody in the hall. If they stop, you kind of bump into them. It's not that these guys have anything against each other. It's just hard racing on short track. Well, they did rough each other up pretty good in the back straightaway a couple of laps ago after a little bump down in one and two. Now, let's see what happens in traffic. 64, that's Bobby Dodder today. As we explained earlier, he is buying out the assets of the race team that he has co-owned uh, with Ronnie and Lee Smith. But today, won't drive, won't work with them. He's in the 64. Now, Jeff Green nestles right up to the rear bumper of Elton Sawyer, and that's Tim Fidoa in the Dura Gloss, number 55. Now you're watching from out the back of, I believe, that Sawyer's car. Yes, at Jeff Green. Good thing we don't have bumper cam on uh, Elton's car today. And it would probably be laying on the racetrack right there. You bet. Yeah, but there's exactly what I was talking about. They've raced for, what, eight, ten laps now, bumper to bumper like that. Nobody's put a, any sheet metal out there on the racetrack. They're just trying to get around this place fast as they can and Three not wide. cause any problem. Three wide? Look, there's no room for that. It might not work, guys. <laughs> I don't believe they got away with that. And Elton goes to the head of the class on that battle. That was a nice move by Elton. That took a lot of guts to do it, but he pulled it off. And I tell you what, that was a big move, too, because... He picked up two spots, and he got a little space between him and Jeff. All right, now you're riding along with Bobby Dodder. That's Jeff Green right alongside. Green makes the pass. Good, hard knuckle racing here. <laughs> That's the racing for 13th place. That's pretty good. All right, we've got 110 of 300 laps complete here at South Boston, Virginia, in the Ford Credit 300. Still up front, Johnny Benson. Oil's Brickyard 400 sweepstakes. 
10 grand prizes of both a trip for two to the Brickyard 400 and a 95 Chevy Monte Carlo Z34. Over 80,000 other prizes. Enter wherever Pennzoil is sold or installed by the pros. Brickyard the game, Pennzoil the name. My uh, truck has uh, 99,000 miles on it. And it's like a it's like a brand new engine. America is talking about split fire. I use lower octane now. Um, it seems like it runs like I had the, the premium in there. I feel like I have more power. I feel like I have a new engine. No hesitation. You hit your passing gear, you're gone. Right now. They'll pay for themselves. Basically, in the first six months, you own them. I think they're fantastic. Split fire at five ninety nine. It only costs more till you use it. At Stanley, we test the quality of our sliding mirror doors by opening and closing them over 100,000 times. This doesn't make for great entertainment, but it does make a great closet door. The Accent Mirror Door from Stanley. No trendy health club. No $60 shorts. No bull. Speed Stick's no-nonsense formula gives you 110% protection. Like you, it never quits. Five minutes. This is Alabama. This is also Alabama. And this is Alabama, too. Come to Alabama and discover a world where anything is possible. Call 1-800-ALABAMA for your free travel guide. The 95 racing season is hotter than ever, and Napa's leading the way with the Road to the Championship sale. For a limited time, pick up a Napa Pace Car t-shirt for just $6.99. Assorted Armor All Car Cleaners, your choice, only $2.49. And an Evercraft 59-piece bonus tool set for a low $19.99. Napa's Road to the Championship sale, where everyone's a winner. We keep America Today's exclusive coverage of the Ford Credit 300 on TNN is brought to you by Napa. We keep America running. Tough day on pit road as the caution is out for a spin by Tim Fedoa up in turn number four. First, there's Jeff Green going way up the track in turn one. We, Jeff, you can see he got way out there. I mean, in that loose stuff. That's marbles, that's dirt, that's everything that makes you get in the wall. He was very lucky not to hit. Now, yeah, watch Fedewa really come into this corner. Jeff Green is directly behind him. I don't know whether there was any contact between them or not, but around he goes. It looked to me like Fedewa got a little bit loose, and then Jeff got into him. Just a little momentum cost. Now, the scary part. in the pits, Johnny Benson was the leader. He was the first car into the pits. Upends the catch can man on Rodney Combs' car, who was not hurt. But Benson was blocked in his pit stall by Combs in front, and I believe uh, Chad Little, no, Jason Keller's car behind. There just is not a lot of room on this pit lane, and so Benson comes out of the pits way back. Elton Sawyer missed his pit coming in and has to come in and stop now at lap 118. We're under caution. We'll be right back. He's your best friend, and he's also killing your back. If nothing seems to help, try Dones. It relieves back pain no matter where it hurts. Dones has an ingredient these pain relievers don't have. Dones, the back specialist. Tomorrow on TNN Outdoors. At noon Eastern, master the finer points on In Fisherman. Then Bill makes all the fish dance on Bill Dance Outdoors. On Bass Masters, the bigger the bass, the bigger the catch. At 1.30, join in the hunt on Buck Masters. Then get out with the stars on Celebrity Outdoors. Catch all the action tomorrow starting at noon, 11 Central on TNN Outdoors. They don't have multi-million dollar sponsors. They don't have cutting edge engines. And they don't even have full-time fit crews. But they do have what it takes to become a winner. The Mellow Yellow 300 Live Sunday, 3 Eastern, 2 Central. And now we have a major 
ASA Racing on TNN Motorsports. It doesn't get any closer. Hemorrhoids. The itch and pain can drive you crazy. Now, most doctors prefer another medicine over Preparation H's formula. It's the formula in Hemorrhid, aloe-enriched Hemorrhid. You see, Preparation H has no pain reliever, none, while Hemorrhid has a maximum strength, fast-acting pain reliever. No wonder, when doctors surveyed compare both, Hemorrhid's formula is the doctor's number one choice. So relieve that itch and pain fast with Hemorrhid. When doctors compare both, Hemorrhid's formula is the doctor's number one choice. NASCAR fans, don't give up racing excitement at the end of the season. Join us December 4th through 8th on the Big Red Boat as TNN presents the NASCAR Family Cruise to benefit the Winston Cup Racing Wives Auxiliary. Sail into the Caribbean with top NASCAR drivers. There'll be NASCAR festivities and activities, plus stops in the Bahamas and kids fun with Warner Brothers Looney Tunes characters. Call now for five days and four nights of non-stop food, fun, and high seas hospitality. It's NASCAR on America's number one family cruise, the Starship Oceanic, leaving Fort Canaveral, Florida, December 4th. It's fun to watch. We're back under green. Chad Little did not make a pit stop. He is the race leader. The cars on fresh tires are trying to fight their way to the front, and what a melee in the middle of the pack here. What Chad has to do right now is just sit there, take care of his tires, and really not abuse them right now. He's, you know, he's not fighting other cars to get to the lead, so he ought to be able to protect his tire pretty well. Now look at this pack. David Green moves up. Elliot Sadler underneath Tracy Leslie. Johnny Benson, who got caught, blocked in his pit, and fell from the lead back to about 10th spot. Now running eight. And everybody on fresh tires. Everybody's really brave on new tires. I tell you what, it makes you do some crazy things sometimes. It's three wide racing. You just don't see that on a four tenths of a mile racetrack, but we've seen it <laughs> at least 10 times in the last three minutes here. Tracy Leslie caught up high there by Sadler, Elliot Sadler. And Johnny Benson and Jeff Fuller poking his nose down on the bottom. And here comes Elton Sawyer on fresh tires as well with Kevin LePage. Here's your Napa Field standing update. Napa, we keep America running. Here's how they're running. 128 laps complete. We watch the battle for seventh place here. Benson takes Fuller with her. Remember, Tracy Leslie is one lap down. It's number 72, the Detroit Gasket. Chevy. And there's Jason Keller and Jeff Green moving back up. They should ride with Elton Sawyer, Sawyer behind the rookie, the former National Modified champ, Jeff Fuller. Had a great run going to Talladega last week until he got up against the side of Rick Wilson. Brought out the last caution of the race. Three wide. And underneath, there's Elton Sawyer. Underneath Jeff Fuller and underneath Tracy Leslie. Well, that camera makes it look like a super speedway straightaway. That thing needed, needed up in no time flat. You just count one, two, three, and they're back in the corner again. You know, here they never get the car turned straight. They always have the wheel turned just a little bit. It's really not a straightaway. It's just a continual turn around this old racetrack. And you know, Selton's down there on the flat where nobody else is running. Yeah, and I'm afraid that's going to hurt him here in a little while. It, it looks good now on new tires, but you're really being abusive on those tires right now. You've got about a... About 170 laps, 160 laps to go. He's got a long way to go on that set of tires. Running for eighth place now against Elliott Sadler. Well, you see Elliott getting a little bit better bite up off the corner. He pulls the car length, but there they go down in the corner. They get pretty even again. As you said, though, Jeff, he's really abusing those tires. That'll come to play in about 15 to 20 laps from now. Sometimes in racing, you don't want to race. I know that sounds stupid, but sometimes you're better off just tucking in behind somebody and riding. It's hard not. It's hard to look at the big picture sometimes. It's really a tough ball game racing because you want to run hard every lap, but that's not always the best thing to do. Up for the lead, Curtis Markham in the Lysol Pontiac of Hubert and Jeff Hensley. Out in front of Chad Little. We thought he was fading away earlier. Here right? comes Chad Oops. Little back to take the lead back. Though. He didn't know he was there, I don't think. All of a sudden, he, somebody rung his bell and said, hey, we just had somebody pass for the lead. What's wrong with Curtis Markham's yeah. car, Randy? I believe the motor is gone, guys. Oh. He just came on the radio and said uh, something is big time wrong. Yep, he's spitting out the back. No question about it, he's in trouble. Mike McLaughlin comes right up to him and underneath him. And McLaughlin will put the Team 34 car into second place. Here comes David Green. Just talking about, 
talking about David Green. You want to see a car work around this racetrack right at the moment. It's probably the fastest car out there. You can really see the 63 cars off the pace. I guess he's got a motor problem or something. He just is he's running for the lead. Now he's going to be lucky just to finish it. What a shame. Behind him come Johnny Benson, Elton Sawyer, the Sadler brothers, and Tommy Houston, the Red Devil Paint Sport, having a great run here. This is a battle for second place here. Mike McLaughlin comes off turn two, and that's David Green just behind him in the 44 car there. These two guys are really good on the slick racetrack. Yeah, I talked to McLaughlin this morning. He likes this place. It suits his driving style. Frank Cease, the car owner, told me this morning, he says, you know, he said, we have to race here on the qualifying setup. We're not allowed to make changes between qualifying and the race. We may just come in on the pit stop and pull off a plug wire. You know, I know what, that sounds crazy, but old buddy here, he's probably done that a lot. I know that when <laughs> you run those 3,700 pound race cars he used to drive, you had to unplug it for a plug. Look at Mike McLaughlin. Clump, come on, uh, Chad Little there. I mean, he pulled four or five car lengths. Now he's going to the outside trying to take a lead away from him. And give his crew chief, Clyde McLeod, a good bit of credit. You saw how Benson got blocked in on the front straightaway pits, and so did Larry Pearson. Pearson lost a lap making his pit stop for getting blocked in. Clyde, when they set up today, he said, we're going to pit on the back stretch so we can be way away from all the congestion on pit road and look where it's put Mike McLaughlin right up there in second place and challenging. Randy? Well, that Larry Pearson deal, they took a rubber out of the right front and uh, it, blocked him in, it blocked him in on pit road. He lost the lap. Now he was running out in front of the race leader as uh, the lead gets uh, tussled again up here. He was running out front suddenly. It appeared the ignition went on Pearson's car, so he slid back. Now he's a lap down again. Jump break for Larry Pearson. Here goes McLaughlin for the lead and David Green. Look at David Green. That car is really working well up off the corner. Watch him pull up on McLaughlin down the front straightaway here. Boy, oh boy, this is faster short track racing right here. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. I tell you, that 23 car, like I said earlier, I was standing outside turn two in qualifying. That car has got a really good motor in it. He was about a two car lengths past everybody else when he got in the gas, which meant he wasn't in the gas as quick as other people, but he still qualified up front. Brett Bodine and I watched it, and we said, ah, oh, it's a terrible lap. <laughs> and the next thing they announced was, then that's the pole. So that shows you what we know, I guess. You see McLaughlin losing a little bit of ground there to the first and second place car now. He's back in third place. That bottom is no place to stay too long. It really eats on the tires. The Sadler brothers back behind this group side by side once again, and that puts all the fans here in South Boston on their feet. As for the lead, David Green now wants a piece of Chad Little. Look who's coming up. That's uh, Pearson trying to get one of his laps back here, the third place car. He's really running well right now. He's got a lot of ground to make up there. 92 Larry Pearson he is a lap down. What's impressive about the 23 car, he's able to hold these cars off and he did not get tires from everybody. And I'm telling that car is really handling That's well. Right. It's running up the straightaway, but it's handling well. You would think they could really blow by him. He is still on the left side tires with which he started the race. And he is sitting in good shape right now because there's about 150 laps to go in this race and he's going to come in and get four tires. Oh boy. Everybody else has pretty much burned up their tires. So Chad Little leads here as Larry Pearson will get his lap back. 150 laps to go. We are halfway in the Ford Credit 300. In Floyd's Knobs, Indiana, people drive for miles around just to see Don Ballard. Because when it comes to car repair, well, there's not much he can't fix. You see, Don's the type of guy who believes that doing a job right and saving money go hand in hand. So he begins each job with a trip to AutoZone. Sure, it's a 20-mile drive. There are other parts stores along the way. But for Don, when it comes to getting the right part for the right price, there's just no place better than AutoZone. I never park up front at a parking lot. That's how door dings happen. The towels bug my wife. She called me a tightwad, but I'm not a tightwad. I, I just don't want to scratch the upholstery. You know, if people took care of their cars, uh, they wouldn't have to keep buying new ones. Pure oil now. I change my own oil. I uh, use Pure Later filters. Pure oil later. I have to watch the dog up there. Town legends live on Pure Later. Oh, look, a nickel. Wet roadways like this inspired Goodyear's newest all-season Aquatread radio, the all-new Goodyear Aquatread 2. 
with a deeper, wider aqua channel to sweep water away for outstanding wet traction and the new Treadlife compound. Goodyear gives you a 65,000 mile warranty, so you've got wet traction when you need it. The all new 65,000 mile Aqua Tread 2, only from Goodyear. No trendy health club, no $60 shorts, no bull. Speed Stick's no-nonsense formula gives you 110% protection. Like you, it never quits. Five minutes. One of these hammers is jacketed in high-impact polycarbonate. The other one is broken. The fiberglass jacketed hammer from Stanley. Today's exclusive coverage of the Ford Credit 300 on TNN is brought to you by Stanley. Since 1843, Stanley's been helping people do things right. Welcome back to South Boston, Virginia. Mike Joy with Buddy Baker and Jeff Burton, who won the Bush race here in 1991 in May, leading the final 133 laps and edging Joe Nemechek by three seconds at the finish. Lead change here. Let's show you what happened. There is Larry Pearson, who's gotten his lap back. Here comes David Green. He just pulled inside of him, and uh, that right there is new tires versus old tires, I believe. The 23 car just could not put up a fight. Those other cars made pit stops under this most recent caution. Chad Little stayed out to pick up the lead. His right side tires have 60 or 70 laps on them, and his left sides have the entire race. But Mike, what they got to try to do is, while they're on fresh tires, they better put a lot of real estate in between them and Chad Little because when he gets fresh tires, it's going to be Katie bar the door if he's anywhere close. And let's update the NASCAR decision. When Chad Little uh, cut down that right rear and came in, they were not charged with a tire change, so he has four to get when he makes his next pit stop. He's got the ace of the sleeve, doesn't he? Now, it's also mentioned Jimmy Spencer is back on the lead lap and has fought his way up to 14th place. So the way they're running, David Green, the leader. Johnny Benson in second. There's a look at Spencer right behind Kevin LePage. Or rather, Mike McLaughlin in second. Johnny Benson is third. Elton Sawyer, Chad Little, Elliot Sadler, Buckshot Jones. Also on the lead lap, Jason Keller, Dennis Setzer, Jeff Green, Ward Burton, who is running in 12th, Jeff Fuller, Kevin LePage, Jimmy Spencer, Hermie Sadler has slipped back to 15th now, Tommy Houston, and Larry Pearson. Those cars are on the lead lap. One lap down, Rodney Combs and Tim Fedua. The relapse down would be the 72 of Tracy Leslie, and four laps back, the fourth qualifier, Danny Edwards, Jr. Now it's time for the Pep Boys driver profile. Pep Boys for quality parts, tires, and service. Here's Randy. Curtis Markham has fallen out of the event. Curtis, you're out. We know you broke your motor, but you still have your helmet in your hand. Uh, where are you going? Well, at first, I'd like to thank the Hensley Racing Team that likes all Friday car. It was really running good. Uh, unfortunately, something happened to the motor. Hermie Sailor isn't feeling good. He hadn't felt good for a couple of days, so they just called me to see if I'd help him out a little bit. So we're going to go do that. Okay, good luck. Well, there's your answer to the Hermie Sadler story, uh, Mike. Thanks, and a great pole-winning run for Curtis Markham. What a, boy, what a thrill that was for he and the Hensley team. He said, Jeff Hensley told him, he says, go out and run a 95, a 15.95 second lap. That's exactly what he ran, and it's good enough for the pole. I tell you, he mentioned that uh, Hermie's sick. You can really see it, too. That car, of course, is not on the screen, but that car, we've been watching him up here. He's really been falling back. We thought he had a car problem, but I tell you what, these little racetracks are really physically demanding, and these 9-to-1 compression engines create a lot of heat. And if you're not feeling well, that's a long time to be in that race car. That's no disgrace to Hermie whatsoever. No. If you're sick and that thing is hot and it's hot outside like it is today, it is hard to get it done. It's a Talladega kind of day. Temperature in the 90s. The humidity is right up there as well. David Green has come to the lead. Boy, the defending champion is ready to get his season turned around. Randy talked to him about that earlier. You know, it's got to get better. Uh, but deep down, you know, I, I'm really, I'm proud of the team. I'm proud of the sponsor. Um, I'm kind of even proud of myself at times, you know, to be able to put on a big smile. And, and I know this is all part of it. I, I look back at that one year Dale Earnhardt had, you know. He didn't forget how to drive that one year, but uh, just things happened, and that's racing. 
His last top 10 finish was at Nazareth in May. And look at them coming. They're coming after David Green. McLaughlin on the bottom for the lead. Well, Mike down on the bottom part of the racetrack. His car is most consistent on the bottom part of the racetrack. You see him, he's uh, as fast as David Green is coming up out of the corner there. Mike McLaughlin first came to prominence driving dirt track modifies in upstate New York for Norm Foster. So he can slide that thing and make it go. Well, he's doing a great job right now. Uh, just behind them, Elliot Sadler is running in fifth place. I mean, that is really something. That, to come over into the Bush Grand National and run that well, that is a great job by him. I just wanted to give him a call. He's won a lot of late model stock car races here. That's a really good point. I, I ran uh, my first Bush race here, and we qualified fifth, sixth, seventh, something like that, and we were a lap down about 40 laps. And I was thinking to myself, my God, what have I got myself in? <laughs> so he is doing a super job. Jeff Green battling side by side with Jason Keller. The budget gourmet Chevrolet against the Goodwrench car and the 64, which is Bobby Dodder today. Let's ride with Dodder a bit. Black flag out on Mike Dillon. They have left a jacking bolt ratchet in the car, sticking out of the roof. So Dillon comes in for the lead once again. In case folks joined us late, explain again about the banking on this track and why David Green gets a better run off the top of the track than uh, McLaughlin gets off the bottom. Well, it's really simple. What they did when they redesigned the racetrack, they wanted to see side-by-side -side racing. Uh, this racetrack was just nose to tail, hit each other, and, and pass. That's how you had to do it. So all the fans said, hey, we want to see side-by-side -side racing. So they banked the racetrack. The closer to the wall you get, the more bank there is. It's a really neat design because it allows uh, two or three grooves to be going on in, in the race all at one time. So what you see is the 44 up top, and he just keeps that momentum going. And the 34, the lower he goes, the less banking he has, and it just doesn't hold his cars well. Makes for great racing. Here's the Stanley Tools Mid-Race Report brought to you by Stanley. Since 1843, Stanley's been helping people do things right. Four different leaders, four lead changes. Average speed, 73 miles an hour. Three cautions for 17 laps. And the attrition getting up there. Mike, uh, Tracy Leslie got in the wall pretty hard with the right front corner just a second ago, getting into turn three. Uh, put some tire marks on the wall itself. I'm sure he'll be coming in the pits in just a second. Leslie is on his way to pit road. We're at lap 182, and David Green is up front. Mike McLaughlin waiting in the wings. Johnny Benson in third. We'll be right back. Pennzoil's Brickyard 400 sweepstakes. Ten grand prizes of both a trip for two to the Brickyard 400 and a 95 Chevy Monte Carlo Z34. Over 80,000 other prizes. Enter wherever Pennzoil is sold or installed by the pros. Brickyard the game, Pennzoil the name. It's a major breakthrough in auto protectant technology. Formula 2001 Super Protectant. It provides a more brilliant, longer-lasting shine than Armorall on vinyl and leather. And look, in the Arizona desert, Formula 2001 brought back the shine to UV-faded vinyl. Rubber, even leather. Get the new standard in automotive protectant technology. Formula 2001, with 50% more active shining ingredients than Armorall. Get Formula 2001 products today. He's your best friend, and he's also killing your back. If nothing seems to help, try Dones. It relieves back pain no matter where it hurts. Dones has an ingredient these pain relievers don't have. Dones, the back specialist. No trendy health club. No $60 shorts. No bull. Speed Stick's no-nonsense formula gives you 110% protection. Like you, it never quits. Bye, man. Today's exclusive coverage of the Ford Credit 300 on TNN is brought to you by Speed Stick by Menon. Like you, it never quits. David Green up front. Tracy Leslie did stop for right side tires. Tommy Houston just made a pit stop under Green. That was routine, and they had trouble on the right rear of the car, so Houston will go a couple laps down. There's Chad Little. And a look through the field here. 
Chad Little's almost a half a lap down to the leaders right now. And like you said a while ago, Jeff, they better get him a lap down because when he puts on fresh tires and nobody else has them, it's going to be goodbye. David's in a really tough spot right now. He wants just to ride because he knows if he can ride, he can stay up front and lead the race and put himself in position. But he also knows, and I guarantee you they've told him, that Little's out there and he's got four tires coming. Yep. They need to, I guess what they need to do is get somebody mad at Little and try to take care of him for him because <laughs> he's going to be hard to handle. Ricky Jeff Fuller in the Sunoco Chevrolet, number 47. Has hung on to the lead lap, and now David Green's going to put him a lap down. And Fuller formerly battled Mike McLaughlin in the Modifieds. Mike will go by. See how high the lead cars are running right now, Mike. Yes. David Green and McLaughlin both have moved way up on the racetrack, using all the banking they use to take care of their tires. Now, we've talked about Chad Little and the fact that he did not come in for four tires when everyone else did. Randy, what's the plan? The plan is to pray and pray hard. These guys <laughs> want to caution desperately down here. It's 194 laps. What you want is to get as many guys a lap down without you getting a lap down. So when you get your four, you don't have so much traffic to battle. But believe me, these guys want those four fresh tires. And they absolutely don't want to do it under green. Because if they do do it under green, they'll probably be a lap down when they do. Yeah, four tires stop under green here would cost you two to three laps. It'd really be tough. Even just if you just took two tires, you're still going to get last down. Yep. Bit of smoke from Phil Parsons' car, number 99, as we go back up front with your little leader, David Green, and his brother, Jeff, almost spun it again in turn two, getting way up high near the wall. He's eventually going to run out of real estate. If he keeps testing that upper lane there, he'll eventually get into that outside wall. Tracy Leslie back in the pits, and Hermie Sadler is in. We'll see if they make the change I don't on think Sadler's car. No, nope. nope, they are not putting Curtis Markham in the car. They're giving him a cold rag, telling him to tough it up. Yep. <laughs> Bill Parsons has come in, and they're looking at uh, the left rear to see if there's a tire rub on Parsons' car. See, now, Mike, Mike McLaughlin right there, he is doing exactly the same as David Green does. If David Green runs high, he runs high. David Green goes low, he runs low. Oop. What he's trying Oop. to do is keep his tires exactly on the same keel as the leader. Buddy, there's smoke from the right rear of Johnny Benson's car. The point leader may have gotten into somebody. Here's Benson. Now watch when he goes into one. Last time by, yeah, there it is. I don't think that's tire smoke. Nope. I, don't, I don't see a tire rubbing. I think they've got something with, something mechanical wrong. I may be wrong. But... No, I just saw chunk, big chunks of rubber coming off the right side, but that may have been just rubber debris. And see, there's that smoke. Can't tell if it's engine or tire smoke from here. But boy, when he goes into turn one, there's lots of it. It's coming out from the center of the car, and uh, that tends to say, tell you that it's probably something other than a tire. Well, right now, it's not posing a problem for the cars behind him. There's not enough smoke to really cause a problem. But if it gets any worse, NASCAR will start looking at that. Randy, what is it? Well, I'll tell you what. You know, when you come to one of these races, there's always a story that you can smell that rear end grease. Now, the 99 car just went by me. He was black flag. It was a rear end on his. Uh, they have just black flag, if I'm not mistaken, the 74 car. And I do believe it's the rear end. They're not happy about it. You're correct. It is a black flag on Benson. The Lipton T Chevrolet that leads the Bush Series points. Elton Sawyer goes by him on the low side. Mike, he still hadn't seen the black flag. He has four laps to re respond to that flag, and then they quit scoring him, so he'll have to come in pretty quick. I've got his crew chief, Bertie, right in front of me, and Bertie is not a happy camper right now. He wants to stay on that racetrack. Wants to stay on that lead lap and hold on to the point lead, 51 points ahead of Chad Little. Now, the next flag Benson will see will be black with a white cross. That means you're not being scored anymore. So this time they will pull him in. Tough break for the point leader, Johnny Benson. 94 laps to go, and here's Benson on pit road. The biggest problem with this is how do you fix it? What do you do to make it quit smoking? I don't know if, if it is a rear end, what you could possibly do to make it quit smoking. Going to the right side. They're changing tires right now as though it's oh, trouble. Oh, we got turn one. And it is Spencer and Jason Keller hard into the wall in turn one. Look at the damage. Spencer. Keller has backed away. I don't know if he can drive away. Both sides of Spencer's car are torn up quite a bit. They were battling for 10th place. 
that's heavy impact on Spencer's car. You can see that thing is tore up. This is a small racetrack, but I'm telling you guys, you can run, you can hit really hard here. I've done it before. Jimmy is okay. Let's show you what happened from inside Setzer's car, or rather, Daughter's car. Wham! Jimmy was just an innocent bystander in this one. He had nowhere to go. That was Buckshot Jones that Jason Keller got into. And Keller will come around and try to make repairs, but Spencer's car, through no fault of his own, is head on into the wall in turn one. We'll be right back. In Floyd's Knobs, Indiana, people drive for miles around just to see Don Ballard. Because when it comes to car repair, well, there's not much he can't fix. You see, Don's the type of guy who believes that doing a job right and saving money go hand in hand. So he begins each job with a trip to AutoZone. Sure, it's a 20-mile drive. There are other parts stores along the way. But for Don, when it comes to getting the right part for the right price, there's just no place better than AutoZone. Eric Benjamin, join us for a high-speed race day, a stock car feast in America's heartland. The Indy cars go 500 miles at Michigan, and the straight liners blast through California wine country. Much more, too, on TV's fastest half hour this weekend, race day. All you need to know about motorsports, race day. Tomorrow, 11.30 a.m., 7.30 p.m. Eastern, only on TNN Motorsports. Today's exclusive coverage of the Ford Credit 300 on TNN is brought to you by... The more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best part in auto parts. Welcome back. There is a look at the uh, Fina Lube Lance Snacks Ford. There's a look at what's left of that car. The front end is still hard against the wall. Now, Johnny Benson has been back in, and they've been under the hood there, Randy. I haven't gotten a clear indication as to what it was right now. Uh, Steve Bird is talking with his crew. They took a look under the hood. They're shaking their heads no, so they do not believe they have a problem. I believe Benson is one down, if I'm not mistaken, Mike. Big discussion with the Bush officials who are looking to see if anything was left on the ground when Benson stopped. Any kind of fluid. Jason Keller has repaired his car. He is back on the racetrack. Here's this week's Peerless Innovation in Motion. Brought to you by Peerless Faucet. Get more out of your faucet than just water. Here's Glenn Jarrett. You know, one of the neatest things about NASCAR in the last few years is how concerned that they and the race teams have become with the environment. This is the Safety Clean and Environmental Services facility, which is present at all of the Winston Cup tracks. Now, they have been licensed by each track to help dispose of the waste oil, the transmission grease, rear end fluids, all of the used solvents that these teams will create when they're here for a Winston Cup weekend, and believe me, it's a lot of them. They bring them to this facility, dump them in the barrels, and they're to ship to the recycling facility in East Chicago, Indiana. Now, Safety Clean is the largest re-refiner of used oil in the whole world, and they are the largest recycler of used solvents in the whole United States. Now, this service is provided at no charge to the tracks. They also have the same facilities in all the race shops that Winston, of the Winston Cup teams. No charge for that. Their key purpose is to, to help protect the environment. All the teams participate. NASCAR requires them to use these facilities when they are on the premises of a Winston Cup track. Anytime that you see a race car with this decal on it, we care. You better believe they recycle. They're helping protect our environment. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, Glenn, <laughs> Safety Clean does a lot for racers. If you want to see more about Safety Clean, tune in inside Winston Cup Racing tomorrow on TNN. They are making emergency repairs to Jason Keller's car. He's lost a lap or two, and I think he'll be back in the pits again when we come back. At Pet Boys, save $40 on our premium brake service. Our ASE certified technicians will install Raybestos lifetime brakes for only $59.99 after rebate. Get lifetime brakes installed for only $59.99 at Pep Boys now. Now at Pep Boys, get any four of our 35,000-mile all-season steel-belted tires at an incredible low $109. That's right, any 75 or 80 series, any four, just $109 at Pep Boys now.
Don't let a new car payment be a financial burden. Call 1-800-32-SMART about Smart Leaks by GMAC. It's an affordable way to drive off with a new GM vehicle. And it might even give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. If you live for the feeling, the moment has come. It's an all-new season. Buckmasters, Sunday, 1.30 p.m., 12.30 Central on TNN Outdoors. What's the big deal at Montgomery Ward? Special buys that bring you big savings, but only for a limited time. Like the Admiral 18.6 cubic foot refrigerator for just $5.49. Or the 21.2 cubic foot for just $5.99. And both come with free ice makers. Or get an Admiral forehead VCR for just $1.69. All at Electric Avenue. So head to Montgomery Ward, where you get more selection of more great brands, all at incredible prices. But hurry, because even though these deals are big, they'll only be around for a little while. Ahoy! Attention voters! Now is the time! Manatee Civic Center is the place and admission is free! It's nautical extravaganza! This weekend only, the Braden and Herald is bringing in new boats, used boats, great exhibits, and much more! Dealers from Fort Myers to St. Pete will be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and you should be too! This is your chance to make a hot deal at the coolest boating event to hit Southwest Florida! Take exit 43 off I-75, the Manatee Civic Center on Route 301 and 41! This weekend only, nautical extravaganza! Don't miss it! the green flag and you see smoke still coming from Benson's car spin Tommy Houston everybody else is going to get by and there will be no flag but Benson is really throwing a lot of smoke here out in front of the leaders Elton Sawyer blows it in on the bottom of the racetrack Mike McLaughlin up high they're all going after David Green who has the lead but for how long I tell you what they all got their eye on that 74 car they're wondering what's coming out behind that thing it is really pulling out right now and it is Sawyer's turn to run the flat on the bottom of the racetrack. Here's the spin again by Tommy Houston. Just got around there. He's Buckshot Jones may or may not have had contact. And he and Doug Hebron both get away. So we stay green. 72, or rather 82 laps to go. See David Green moving in there. Trying Benson's car right now is not smoking as bad as it was just a second ago. It looks like it's clearing up, but it's still smoking enough that I'm not sure what they're going to do on this. I'm afraid they're not going to have a whole lot of choice. I know they don't want to because he is he is up front of the points, and they sure hate to make these kind of things decide the point championship, but they I'm afraid they're going to have to. They did. They black flagged him. Now, remember, Chad Little has four fresh tires, and Little is coming. He is up to sixth place and in heavy traffic mowing down the front five. Here are your leaders. There's McLaughlin, there's Sawyer. And Kevin LePage brushes the wall at turn two. Here's that second pack and you'll see number 23 Chad Little coming. And he is out of that second pack right now. Also, Kermy Sadler has now been relieved by Curtis Markham. Randy can update us. Kermy Sadler has been suffering from the flu all week. Absolutely, guys. He was laid out in the back of the transporter. Emergency medical uh, team came over here and administered some oxygen. He's, he's sitting calmly on the back of his rig right now, shaking his head, taking a little oxygen. He is okay, but boy, he was awfully sick. So uh, Curtis Markham now in the one guard. NASCAR has pulled in the black flag for number 74. Steve Bird apparently doing his best Johnny Cochran imitation has won this battle with the NASCAR officials and they're leaving Benson out there. The reason for it, look at the car. It's not smoking anymore. I don't know what it was, but it's cleaned itself up here and now he's just coming off the corner. You can see no smoke coming out of the back of Benson's car. They must have had an oil line loose or something and it got on the headers and then it took a while for it to burn off. Once it burned off, then you don't have a problem. I saw them go under the hood under the caution. They're only under for a few minutes, but they must have fixed whatever it was. It just took a little while to get that oil burn off the headers. Randy? Well, Johnny claims that it only happens when he gets hard on the brakes. So uh, I guess if he runs the rest of the race and doesn't get hard on the brakes, he'll be okay. So NASCAR says, go ahead. All right, Chad Little has caught the lead pack, and Randy, they have the pit board out at the end of pit road for David Green, and they have tires at the ready. Green is locked up in a big battle for the lead. As we watch from Elton Sawyer, here comes Chad Little, fresh tires and rent sheet metal. 
Boy, that car looks like it's been through a battle, but he's fixing to have a battle right now as he moves in there just behind the first two cars. Remember, Little is on fresh tires. Look at this. Boy, it makes it look easy, darn Jeff. I tell you what, like I said earlier, that is just, that's all you can ask for. If you got them and everybody else does it, makes you look like Richard Petty or even Buddy Baker. How about that? <laughs> on the bottom, that car sticks well on new tires, and he goes after Mike McLaughlin's second place position. And now after David Green and the lead. They're fighting him off with everything they can, but it's just a matter of time. If those new tires, if he gets up in that preferred line, it's all over right now. A Ford has never won this race. Chad finished fifth last year. That's the best Ford finish here. He's got the lead. Well, I know Ford would like to see a winning race. It's a Ford credit race, and I know they sure would like to see it. You can see what great forward bite he gets there. David Green on a little more used tires there. Just can't get in the throttle as hard as Chad Little does. 11 cars are on the lead lap. Chad Little, the new leader. 44, David Green. 34, Mike McLaughlin. 38, Elton Sawyer. 46, Elliot Sadler. What a great run he's having in fifth. 64, that's Bobby Donner today. 92, Larry Pearson. Number three, Jeff Green. Double zero, Buckshot Jones. 95, Ward Burton is on the lead lap. And so is Johnny Benson. See McLaughlin trying to make a move on the bottom side of David Green there. Couldn't quite make it pay off, but he, I think he may be a little bit faster than Green right at the moment. That's Mike Dillon, number 12, way on the bottom. He has laps down, but he also has fresh tires. Guys, that's got to be a heartbreaker for those three right there. They're both running really well, and if they, they've got a good margin to win the race, but they're being outfired right now, and that is really a tough deal to handle. Now they're all racing for second, but I guarantee you they're going to race for second. It's hard to lose the race for the lead. One thing about racing, though, is great equalizer is traffic. When you get in traffic, one mistake, and you're right back there with those guys. You've abused your tires to get in the lead. All of a sudden, it's an even playing field. Yeah. That's right. And what allowed Chad Little to get in this position was he got wrecked. I tell you, that's great strategy, yeah, huh? I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, Herbie Sadler can tell you he spun yeah. years ago at Orange County. Cut some tires down, got some tires late in the race, won the race for him. Second, third, and fourth place here. Still continues to be a close battle. Jeff Fuller and Jeff Green changed a little sheet metal. You're riding with Elton Sawyer there with the camera inside the car. You can see there's a few places on this racetrack where you really got some bumps where the car really reacts to it. And the springs are so soft that a lot of times it looks like the car really broke something getting in the corner, kind of jumped sideways. We gave you the cars on the lead lap, one lap down are Kevin LePage, Jeff Fuller, and Rodney Combs. Two laps back, Tim Fedewa. Three laps down, the Hermie Sadler car, along with Tommy Houston. That really is a super view right there, buddy. That looks like you're driving a race car. I mean, you're a little bit higher than you are, but that right there, if we could, if we could put some centrifugal, centrifugal force on people and on their couch, that would be it right there. Good point. Now, here is uh, 64 Bobby Dodder. Racing for seventh place. Now that's Danny Edwards just ahead who started fourth. And got his car banged up. Had to make an unscheduled pit stop and is eight laps down. Edwards running in 18th position. Now here's Elliot Sadler battling with Larry Pearson. Both lead lap cars. This is for fifth place. Now Pearson was a lap down, made up that lap. He's just as fast as the lead car. What he needs is track position right now. Gets fifth place away from the younger of the Sadler brothers. Carries him up the racetrack. Well, almost. <laughs> yeah. And Chad Little's trying to put a lap on Johnny Benson. And that means Johnny Benson's laying on his brakes again. You see it smoking again. It went away for about 15, 20 laps. Now he's having to lay on it a little bit, trying to keep ahead of uh, the 23 car, Chad Little. Oops, black flag is out this time for Benson. Been a tough day for the point leader. He is 51 ahead of Chad Little coming into this race today. 55 laps to go. We'll be right back to South Boston, Virginia after this.
from Texaco Clean System 3 gasolines to Haviland Formula 3 motor oil and Texaco antifreeze coolant, there's no better place to take your car than to the star. And go right to your car. Take it to the star. AC Delco knows that as a car gets older, its engine runs rougher. So we developed a spark plug to help bring back new car feel and things really gelled. Introducing Rapid Fire from AC Delco. It makes an engine idle up to 27% smoother and accelerate with up to 18% quicker throttle response. New Rapid Fire. Its performance ought to have the competition shaken. Split Fire won a United States patent. It's clearly different, but is it really better? Some of the toughest judges in the nation conducted trials and published their verdicts. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. A 4.8% gain in mileage. Quicker in the quarter mile. There's nothing like a split fire. You'll get more power and more mileage guaranteed. You'll get it all for your money back. Listen up, Sprint Car fans. It's the biggest night of the year. And these winged warriors are ready to crank it up. TNN Motorsports presents live coverage under the lights of Knoxville, where top names like Dave Blaney, Steve Kinzer, and Andy Hillenberg will be kicking up the dirt. It's the World of Outlaws Amico Knoxville Nationals, live August 19th, 10 p.m., 9 Central on TNN Motorsports. Today's exclusive coverage of the Ford Credit 300 on TNN is brought to you by... Split Fire, the patented performance spark plug. It only costs more Jeff to it. use it. The sixth place car has brought out the fifth caution of the day. Bobby Dodder going around in turn number four while battling in heavy race traffic with Elliot Sadler and Larry Pearson. Has brought out the caution. You can see not much damage to the Dennis Shoemaker Duraloop Chevy. Here's what happened. He gets uh, touched there in the back, but uh, he was checking up on Elliot there just a little bit, Elliot, Elliot Sadler, and uh, when he checked up, he run in the back, and then he got hit from behind. That turned him right around. That is a chain reaction wreck right there. That's yep. all you can say. Jeff Fuller and Jeff Green got into it. Here from the in-car camera on board with Dodder. Wow. They, he did a good job, didn't he? <laughs> we, we both been there. I remember those feelings, don't you? I am my eyes shut. It was holding on. I thought I was going to hit. All right, they're going under the hood on Johnny Benson's car on pit road, and they have repaired damage. The whole right side was raked with tire marks on Jeff Green's car. They get him out in the way. I'm going to tell you, if, if there's no damage and he gets tires, the three cars in this race. Because he did put on right sides, and if he can... There's something wrong, though. He isn't coming up to speed down here. He stopped in the bottom lane. Looks like Jeff Green's got a problem. They had, they had to push him out. Here comes the pace he's, car. He's got water coming out from behind him. Oh, yes. Over. His pits are real wet also. You can see a lot of moisture down in his pit area, and there's steam coming out of the back of it. And there's Benson loses a lap. Just in front up here, you'll see Jeff Green. You see the steam coming out of the right rear corner there. He will not be a threat. <laughs> Even, even with fresh tires. Sorry, Dale. Uh, Jeff Fuller is on pit road. They're pulling out the right front fender. He got into the side of Jeff Green trying to avoid the incident. And there you can see the damage on Jeff Fuller's car. Now, I want to give Jeff Fuller a call. He has done a super job this year. I've watched him run some. And I really think that with no more experience than he had in this type of race car, he has done a super job at every kind of race track. And to consider that that's a brand new race team. That is amazing. I, yep. I, I really have been impressed with him, and uh, he does everything well. I've, I've listened to him do some interviews, and he just does a good job. Yeah, he's a racer. The AutoZone Tech Fact is brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, best parts and auto parts. Here's Randy. Well, you hear a lot of drivers talk uh, occasionally about the racetrack changing, the racetrack changing. That means that the actual porous material that the track is made of can secrete oils and different debris that, that comes up through the surface that is with weather. It changes. The sun is out. 
Oils come up and it changes the racetrack. Now this particular track has just been repaved and reconfigured at South Boston. I talked to a lot of drivers before the race. They said the asphalt is absolutely perfect. They should be able to run 300 laps here without the racetrack changing a lot. That means they may not have to make a lot of major adjustments on their race cars. So uh, they've done a great job here at South Boston with the pavement. Thanks, Randy. And you can see over Randy's shoulder, the skies have cleared over turn number one. The threat of rain we had at the start of this race is not there. We're going to restart in a lap, so we'll take a very quick break and be right back. If you settle for a remanufactured engine without a brand name, be sure you've got a pair of name brand shoes. AC Delco Engines, the national brand name with the nationwide warranty. Call for a location near you. Of course, if you come in on foot, we'll understand. So when I turn the key, it sounds like my starter is going bad. So I figured since I heard about AutoZone, it was a good place to try as any, right? But get this. I go in there to buy a starter. The guy tells me we need to test my old one first just to make sure that's not the problem. It turns out that it's the solenoid switch. That one little test gave me a big headache. You know, that AutoZone's all right. And when you get service like that, I mean, you don't forget it. At Stanley, we test the quality of our sliding mirror doors by opening and closing them over 100,000 times. This doesn't make for great entertainment, but it does make a great closet door. The Accent Mirror Door, from Stanley. Athlete's foot is a predator. To cure it all, you've got to kill it all. Today, there's Lutrimin AF spray and powder with full prescription strength medicine that kills all causes of athlete's foot. Lutrimin AF, the killer cure. They don't have multi-million dollar sponsors. They don't have cutting edge engines. And they don't even have full-time fit crews. But they do have what it takes to become a winner. The Mellow Yellow 300 live Sunday, 3 Eastern, 2 Central. ASA Racing on TNN Motorsports. It doesn't get any closer. We're back under green. Chad Little up front. Opry Land, the official destination of NASCAR. For more information, call 615-889-6611 weekdays. Well, you got Buck jo Buckshot Jones spinning out of turn two. Uh, there might be a call. Yes, there is a caution. So that well, was, I tell you, they've been racing hard for the last 10 laps while we've been gone. They've really been racing uh, hard. And he may go a lap down, which is a shame. He was in eighth place in only his second Bush start. The pace car was unable to pick up Chad Little. Well, this should get interesting. Hmm. I don't know for sure if Chad had taken the caution. So now he will wait on the pace car down in turn one. Now, here's... Here's where Larry Pearson, 92, was battling Elliott Sadler so hard. And look at Tommy Houston way on the outside. This can't work. Tommy's been around for a while. He knew it good, and he was backing out. And here's Buckshot Jones outside of Mike Dillon. Gets up there in that third lane. There's the marbles I was telling you about earlier. When you get in there, that car will come around on you. Yeah, but give Tommy Houston credit for keeping that last wreck from happening. Oh, yeah. That's a What's lot that? of experience. What's that line about there's old race drivers and there's bold race drivers? <laughs> and I've been both. But there aren't too <laughs> many old, bold race drivers, right? Here's Randy. Well, Pearson, he's been through the battle today. He was battling out there, got a tire rub from that action with uh, the uh, younger Sadler brother. Uh, Pearson was up to about seven. He had to come down pit road, pull the sheet metal away, so now he goes back to the last, last car on the lead lap again. So uh, Larry's been digging today. Back in again. It's been an uphill battle for Larry. His crew chief, Ryan Pemberton, celebrates uh, one year with that race team today. South Boston's the home track to this team's Jack Man, Danny Bomar, spotter Bill Smith, catch can man Steve Kaysen, and engine builder Kevin Blanks are all from the South Boston area. Larry has three wins and eight top fives in 14 starts here. They teach them how to race well here, don't they? You bet. Mike, those cars look like a barroom battle there. All they can say was, I was a winner. Look at that nose. Yeah, you should see <laughs> the other guy, right? 
See, they're showing him in the lead lap. They only have nine cars in the lead lap. And they are showing Buckshot Jones in the lead lap. I don't uh, I believe, did he get to come around? I believe Yeah, they let have. him come back around. So he is still on the lead lap as of when that caution came out. I got to give my brother a plug here. If I don't, my mother won't let me come home. He's worked his way all the way up to fifth. And that's, there he uh, is. That's, he's battling with uh, Elliot right now. I don't Just think Ward's going to like that too much because Ward ought to be in front of him. But they've really done a good job in that crew. Ready? To that point. I just want to let you know, Jeff, that I talked to Ward. He said, uh, let everybody know he taught you everything you know. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. know it all up here, by the way. Yeah, but did he teach you everything he knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's racing, and I'm talking about it today. So That's maybe okay. That's okay. Boy, he had a tough ride at Talladega on his roof there in the Bush Grand National Race. And, you know, there were just so, so many incidents. Because yeah. they only go to the fastest speedway on earth once a year, as they now put... Ward Burton in line in his proper position. Elton Sawyer was one driver that felt that all that action at Talladega might have been a little bit more exciting than perhaps it needed to be, he explains. We're just trying to get over what we went through last week. A bunch of drivers were talking, and, you know, we really didn't do a very good job for NASCAR or for our series or, and, or for TNN. You know, it didn't look good. Um, you'd have thought, uh, like Buddy Baker said, they went over in the infield and got 25 guys and asked them if they wanted to race, and that's what they put out there. So I, I guess we had the weekends reversed. We could race like that here this weekend, but we didn't need to be doing that last weekend. But uh, I think it was kind of a reality check, and hopefully everybody's kind of got their head screwed on right. We'll have a good short track uh, uh, fender bending type race here but uh, we can do that here and they are and they have been all day long and let me tell you i'm gonna i'm gonna clarify that last statement these are some great race car drivers and when i said that i said it looked like that but these guys have a lot of talent last week was just one of those days where everybody got in trouble look at the sweat pouring down the face of elton sawyer now he does have an air system to blow cooled filtered air into the helmet there you see on the left side Puts down the visor and gets ready to go to work. 29 laps to go. Will it be Chad Little on those fresher tires? Can David Green or Mike McLaughlin or Elton Sawyer or Ward Burton steal the lead? Behind them come Bobby Dodder, Buckshot Jones, Elliot Sadler, and Larry Pearson all on the lead lap. Nine cars to fight it out here for 28 laps. Well, Chad has a bumper car in between him right there, a lap over car that's uh, in between him and David Green. But uh, Chad is so strong from that point of the racetrack to the other, it's really running down the straightaway. As you said, you have a while ago, it's got a great motor in it, but it's handling well, too. When you combine those two things right there, it's really hard to do. You get up the straightaway, and you get to the corner, and everybody's got, oh, cross in front straightaway here. It's spot. Mike Dillon in the wall along with Danny Edwards, Jr. This will be a caution. Well, this race is going to be interesting, guys. We're going to have 25 laps to go, and it keeps getting better and better. And Curtis Markham tried to get a lap back. He is driving the number one car in relief of Hermie Sadler. Tried to get a lap back from Chad Little. Didn't quite make it. Mike Dillon's car. The Salem leasing machine. And Danny Edwards got together. In the uh, Lumar Chevrolet. Well, these are some tough cars. Every time I ever hit the wall, it knocked me out. These cars just keep right on ticking after they get in the wall like that. <laughs> when y'all were racing, y'all tore up so much stuff, y'all taught us how to build them strong. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> 24 laps to go. Who will win this? Pace car may have a good shot at it. We'll be right back. There's a fine line of motor oil separating your car's engine parts that's as little as a thousandth of an inch. But friction and heat can make motor oil become volatile and vaporize, weakening its ability to protect expensive parts. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 is formulated to control volatility, fight vaporization, and provide complete engine protection, no matter what you drive. Add more life to your car. Take it to the stars. At AutoZone, most of our customers are folks who like to work on their cars themselves. But the ones who come in most often are those who work on cars for a living. Guys like Ed Graven. Now, Ed's garage is in Ogden, Utah, where most of the time you'll find him pulling an engine or sliding under a car. And just about every day, he drives past a half dozen other parts stores on his way to AutoZone. 
because Ed knows that when it comes to getting the right part for the right price, there's just no place better than AutoZone. Man has always been fascinated with speed. But winning is more than a flash of speed. It's a measure of skill. A test of guts. That's why the true spirit of NASCAR lies not in the machine, but in the man who drives it. We're proud to be part of this great sport. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. Leave it to Peerless Faucet to create a shower so smart, it can not only sense when a toilet has been flushed, it can also adjust the water temperature accordingly. Scald Guard technology by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. They just dropped the green flag, and Chad Little once again tries to take off and distance himself from the field. David Green is second, Mike McLaughlin third, Elton Sawyer in the fourth spot, and then a ways back to Buckshot Jones, who battles along with Ward Burton. Dennis Setzer, and Jones is around. Burton just misses him. He got in the wall hard enough to really wrinkle up the left rear corner. I don't know how much damage that's going to do for him, but uh, the yellow did not come out. We're still under green. Buckshot's back underway. Here's what happened. Ooh. I sure am glad Ward didn't hit him because I didn't want to have to call that one. <laughs> <laughs> he just got in there just a little bit too high. Trying, it's, yeah. You know, it's 20 laps to go and everybody's racing for the best position they can get. And that's what you're supposed to be doing. And he is only just now going a lap down. That's right. He was he was racing for position. He was running hard. Now, the fastest car on the track is the number six of Tommy Houston. Houston is the most recent car to get tires. So he goes by Chad Little without a fight or a fuss and is now only two laps down. Remember, Houston came in and got tires under green. You said the important part. That spotter says two laps down the six car. Let him go. David Green in second, Mike McLaughlin, and Elton Sawyer. Those three drivers to slug it out for second spot behind Chad Little. 15 laps to go. There's that battle for second and further back. Ward Burton still battling there with in the midst of that pack of cars. A little distance back there, Larry Pearson got a spot from him and Elliot Sawyer. Here comes McLaughlin. Sadler. Yep, here comes McLaughlin again. He's inside David Green for second place. There's the battle and the pass. McLaughlin gets the spot. Boy, he's been working on that for 75 laps and finally made it work. McLaughlin finally got back Green. The band up first in class today, first Chevrolet, and the first car to finish the race using only eight tires. There comes Elton Sawyer now. He's putting a little bit on Green there. He's trying to dive to the inside. I believe David Green might have used his tires up, but that car is starting to move wider and wider in the corner. Elton's been trying to pull that move off for a long time now. And I'm really surprised that they would even keep trying it because as many times as he's tried it, you would think his tires would be gone, but he's, he keeps digging. He only needs to get 11 more laps out of them. It's time to go, isn't it? He saw your head fall back here. He can't run down low very, very few many laps like that. What he's doing now is trying to make David Green drive a little bit hard in the corner, maybe he his tires up a little bit. Ten to go. Now here in eighth place is Bobby Dotter in the Dura Loop Chevy. The oil smears on the windshield, but he's had a good strong run today. Well, the first race of that team, that's not a bad out to come out of No, he can't finish line. It's not over yet. Right. Smoke is shot over. Just in front of him here is Ward Burton, your brother. Now, what's he doing right or wrong right now? <laughs> well, he's not leading. That's the main thing he's doing wrong. He, uh, he's at home. I know he wants to win this race some kind of bad, but I tell you, he's, we've all gotten used to running these speedways, and these short tracks are hard to come back to. You know, McLaughlin is closing up on Chad Little, but he has only seven laps left. He has really gotten away from David Green. It's clear that McLaughlin's car was faster than Green. He is running down Chad Little, but time is running out on him. I'd say Chad Little's counting money right now, but, uh, you know, anything could happen in racing. McLaughlin is certainly a, a guy that you don't want to take lightly, but so he's got to keep his eye in that mirror and make sure he doesn't close that margin down because he'll make a run at it. 
If this race had 16 laps to go instead of six, I'd say McLaughlin had a fair shot to win it. But the scoreboard is going to be his undoing. Here you watch the race for third. Elliott Sadler coming up, and the crowd comes to its feet. For one of their hometown heroes, he's going to make a run at Elton Sawyer before this is over. Four to go. There's McLaughlin. Continuing to close on the race leader, Chad Little. He has a victory this season. His first. And that third place race is as yet undecided. There it is with Sadler in that black and yellow DeWalt car on the bottom underneath Elton Sawyer. Wow, he's really driving the wheels off that thing. Gets a little bit loose there and almost got in Elton Sawyer's side there. He's driving really hard. He wants to show these people at his hometown track what he's all about. He's got another race to run after this one, by the way. He's got a hundred lap of the run, so he's, uh, he's got his work cut out for him still yet. This will be the bell lap. White flag should be in the air for Chad Little. And Mike McLaughlin. White flag on that third place battle. Oh, oh, Elton Sawyer goes around going into turn one. Well, Sadler will get third spot and oh, around he, he goes. Sadler spins in the back straight away. Checkered flag. Chad Little wins it. Mike McLaughlin is second. David Green is third. Larry Pearson picks up the fourth spot. And unofficially, Ward Burton is fifth. And coming across in a dead heat were Sawyer and Sadler. Good grief. Well, let's show you what happened. Elton gets touched there by Elliott, getting in the corner, turns him around. Watch everybody respond to this. This could have been a real bad wreck right here. See uh, Pearson go down just under him there and make a move on him. Now, in the car. It looked like Elton started down, and, and Elliot was, was had his fender just there. But when you hear him, he never got off the gas. If he had gotten off the gas, he would have hit the wall to turn one. Elton did a really good job there. The motor man doesn't like it. No. But that <laughs> saved a rear clip on that race car. He never, did a super job. Never stopped driving it. It did look as if Elton made his move down into turn one, and Sadler was there. Well, the lead car always has a preferred line going in. They just got together. It wasn't anything intentional at all. You couldn't see it on the uh, on the replay, but her, Elliot then on the back straightaway had some sort of problem, and that's why he didn't finish third. He was spinning down the back straightaway. It looked like he was going straight. I don't know what happened. We'll sort it out when we come back. <laughs> it's all over, but the shouting and the trophies and the celebrating here in South Boston, Virginia. We'll be right back. The Charlie Daniels Talent Roundup, next. Bud Light presents Bull Nanza Nashville, part of the professional Bull Riders Tour, only on Championship Rodeo, Sunday on TNN. In July, Cable is your guide as you hack your way through teeming jungles, dive the watery depths in search of lost treasure, join the Discovery Channel for a bone-chilling two-part original documentary, hear the tales of real-life Indiana Joneses who braved untold peril to recover priceless booty and ancient treasures, seekers of the lost treasure on the Discovery Channel. Cable, more swashbuckling adventure than ever. On Paragon Cable, more choice, less money. We'll go out of our way to give you the best deal on your rental purchase at Quality Home Entertainment Center. Quality products and personalized service is what you expect and what we deliver. From home electronics to furniture and appliances, you'll always get easy terms, free delivery, and free quality service while you rent. And there's no credit required for your rental purchase at Quality Home Entertainment Center. Remember, our name says it all. Quality Home Entertainment Center, 3113 First Street East, Bradenton. Call 747-7774. Exclusive coverage of the Ford Credit 300 on TNN has been brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. Take it to the stars. And by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts.
For the first time ever, a Ford has won a Bush Grand National Race at South Boston, Virginia. And for the first time ever, Chad Little has won a Bush Grand National Short Track Race. Randy Pemberton is somewhere there in the middle of Victory Lane. And that's Doggy Winston and wife Donna and Chad. And let me tell you something, this was a tough race. This guy's tired, Chad. I know it was tough out there, but big smile on your face, deservedly so. What a wonderful day. I mean, uh, we qualified great and um, just uh, just kept coming from uh, from behind, you know. we um, The tires won it for us today. We, we got out of sequence, but we had that caution and I had four new tires and they, and they had 75 or so laps on theirs, maybe even more than that. And, I mean, tires won it for me today, so thank you to Goodyear. And you know, that's the gamble when you get out of sequence. Sometimes you can you can really have an advantage, and sometimes it can hurt you. The caution really worked in our favor, and also the caution when we had that flat tire at the start of the race. So, you know, I want to thank our team, of course, and Harris, Cedar, and Bear because uh, we worked really hard for this. Um, this car has probably been wrecked more than any other any of our other cars, but this is its first win, and uh, goes down in history books. Chad, were you worried at any particular time, I guess, that you would not catch a caution because you had a lot of laps on those lefts? Well, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but um, I let, uh, I waved several of the cars by me um, in the, about, you know, lap 175, 200. I, I just couldn't, the tires were getting too old, you know, and um, so we, luckily we got that caution, but if we wouldn't have, you're right, we would have been hurting because we had to make a green flag stop or else just kind of ride around, so... Like I said, you know, the tires, uh, it was a gamble, but we didn't, it wasn't really a gamble for us because we didn't have a choice. We had a flat tire, but um, everyone just worked really hard, and, uh, you know, I'm always reluctant about the short tracks because of the, the luck factor involved, but, uh, boy, it just worked out great. I want to say hi to Greg and, and Julie back home and Angela. They're, uh, they're watching from home, and Jill and Sherry, and everybody in Spokane. My mom's here this weekend, and that's kind of nice. The first time she's seen me win a race back here, so just a real good weekend. Congratulations to you and the team and your entire family. Mike? And the extended family, both his car owners, um, had babies this week. Doggy, did. Doggy Winston. Doggy Winston, yeah. <laughs> but, okay. Now let's show you what happened to uh, Elliot Sadler in the back straightaway, who was running up among those front four. Now this is after. Well, there he goes. I don't know. That that that's really odd looking. It looks like maybe he just. It was loose, and it never would get caught back up before him. You know, as you said, you're hardly ever going straight here. If it's possible, after the Elton Sawyer incident, he got loose, saved it, caught it, saved it, caught it. You know, it, it's, you know it's, it. it's the last lap. He probably yep. never wanted to get out of the gas once he got in it. It may have been better off just to roll out of the throttle, let the car catch itself, and then go again. Top break for Elliott Sadler, who will finish the day in eighth place. We'll give you the rundown and the new points that show Chad Little in the lead when we come back. This is Dale Jarrett's NASCAR. You can't get his engine, you can't get his tires, but you can get his motor oil. Texaco Haviland Formula 3. It's formulated to control volatility and fight oil vaporization. It provides complete protection, and it's the exact same Haviland you can buy right off the shelf, which, by the way, is a heck of a lot easier. Add more life to your car, take it to the stars. So when I turn the key, it sounds like my starter is going bad. And so I figured since I heard about AutoZone, it was a good place to try as any, right? But get this. I go in there to buy a starter. The guy tells me we need to test my old one first just to make sure that's not the problem. It turns out that it's a solenoid switch. That one little test gave me a big headache. You know, that AutoZone's all right. And when you get service like that, I mean, you don't forget it. From Darlington to Talladega, through Daytona, Rockingham, and Watkins Glen. In every major NASCAR race, Bush Beer recognizes the pole winner with the Bush Pole Award. Because if there's one thing we know for sure, everyone follows the leader. Bush Beer, proud sponsor and official beer of NASCAR. Chad Little has won his first short track race on the Bush Series. Mike McLaughlin, great run to finish second. David Green, Larry Pearson, Ward Burton, top five. Bobby Dodder, Elton Sawyer, Elliott Sadler, eighth. Buckshot Jones, nice run in ninth place. Kevin LePage, tenth. Jeff Fuller, Tim Fedua, Rodney Combs. Have a look at the rest of the field here. Well, you've seen a lot of races at this track, Jeff Burton, from the cockpit, from the pits, and uh, now from the broadcast booth. What would you think today? Well, I tell you, it was, it was a really impressive race. 
Chad got a big break with the tires, but he still ran well all day long. Everybody's going to say the tires won it for Chad, and obviously it was a big advantage, but they still put themselves in a position to win, and that's how you win races. Buddy, we'll look at the points here. Seven races ago, Chad Little trailed by 331 points. Now he leads by 14 points. Boy, a different show from Talladega, but boy, a lot of contact today. Well, Chad Little's got one thing in favor. He wins a bunch. I yes. mean, Benson won two races, but Chad Little is on a tear right now. He's got momentum on his side. I wouldn't count him out for the championship. And Jeff, as you said, he's got power. He's had power all season on these guys. That engine really, that engine really does run down the straightaway, and they do a good job through the corner too. And he does a good job driving it. They don't wreck very much. Mike, here's one thing. You know, he comes so close to getting knocked out in that wreck. He didn't plan the advantage on the uh, tires at all today. It's one of those things. When things go right for you, they're going right for Chad Little right now. And I tell you, momentum's a hard thing to slow up. That's right. Well, Chad Little celebrates in victory lane as uh, some of the sheet metal get unbent and the Bush Circuit will head off to Indianapolis Raceway Park next week as part of a big weekend of racing, including the Super Trucks, the Bush Series. I think USAC Silver Crown is there all at Indianapolis Raceway Park and then, of course, the Brickyard 400 with the Winston Cup cars next weekend. NASCAR fans have a chance to uh, make cruise history of a sort from Cape Canaveral to the Bahamas December 4th through 7th. TNN and the Winston Cup Racing Wives Auxiliary. Kyle Petty, Ernie Irvin, Ted, uh, Todd Bodine, Ted Musgrave, Steve Grissom are among the drivers who will participate and the proceeds will benefit the Winston Cup Drivers Wives Auxiliary. For information, you can call toll-free 1-800-972-2359. Also going on at Opryland from August 24th through September 4th, Opryland is dedicated to all sorts of motorsports. There will be show cars, merchandise, trailers, driver appearances, and lots more going on at Opryland. I'm going to be there. Well, that's, uh -huh. re that's reason enough to go, <laughs> folks. Well, I'm going now if you're going to go. All I right. have fun today. I'm going to have a buddy from now on. 615-889-6611 is the number to call weekdays for the TNN Salute to Motorsports. And tomorrow, live on TNN, the Mellow Yellow 300, including, and he, he said, please mention that I'm the defending champion of this race. Okay, Darrell Waltrip, you're the defending champion of that ASA race at Topeka, Kansas. You'll see that at 3 o'clock Eastern Time live here on the Nashville Network. Where, where are you tomorrow, Lake Norman? Lake Norman, but I'll be watching TNN when the races come on. You can count okay. on that. We'll be at the, uh, I'll be running the SCCA National Championship race at Pocono, Pennsylvania. Oscar Kovaleski promotes that. They always have a pretty good crowd for that one. Well, you know what not to do. On a lot of occasions today, you found out what not to do. But, yeah, most uh, of what we've seen here today. Do we'll what try. Chad Little done. Everything will work out just fine. <laughs> right, so. Hey, you can really see on the short track race and how important it really is to stay out of trouble. Uh, just for example, Ward, all day long, you never really had a car that could run with these guys. Stayed out of trouble, didn't dent his car, then finished fifth. That really is a big key on, on these short track races. Of course, fifth doesn't mean a lot to him because he's not racing for points. He wants to see the checkered flag. That's it. Um, a member of uh, Chad Little's crew today, 18-year-old Ginger Campbell of Evington, Virginia, uh, was a crew member. She works for Harris Teeter Grocery Store uh, that helps sponsor Chad Little's team and uh, one company associates named an honorary pit crew member um, for Chad Little. So uh, she gets to go to Victory Lane. That's a, that's a pretty neat deal. We will be joining the Charlie Daniels Talent Roundup in progress, hosted by Charlie Daniels right here on TNN. That's coming up next. Joined in progress. Well, it's been a big day of NASCAR racing. Heartland Park, Topeka, Kansas, with the NASCAR Super Trucks by Craftsman Series and the Ford Credit 300 for the Bush Series here at South Boston, Virginia. Thanks to Randy Pemberton, who braved the 95-degree heat here to uh, run pit road for us today. And Special thanks to Jeff Burton, driver of the Ray Bestest Ford Thunderbird on the Winston Cup circuit, who cut his teeth in a lot of laps here in South Boston Speedway. And we want to thank you for joining us. Hope you had fun today. I had a ball. I tell you what, you guys have a tough job up here. I respect you a little bit more after doing this. Well, we're glad that you could be with us. So for Randy Bemberton, Buddy Baker, I'm Mike Joy, congratulating Chad Little on his victory in the Ford Credit 300. Stay tuned for ASA Racing Live on TNN tomorrow, and our next Bush Race telecast will be from Richmond, Virginia, in September, sir. Join us then. All right. So long, everybody.